Good morning. I'm Stephen Leake. I'm an elder at First Presbyterian Church in Mesquite, and I'm also the teacher of the Discipleship Sunday School class there. Today we're continuing with our story of the Gospel of John, and just as a reminder, our curriculum is based on the new daily Bible study series by Professor William Barclay, and we're using the new Revised Standard Version of the Bible which is the one that we use in the pews at our church. Today, we're talking about the story of Jesus walking on the water. And it comes from the sixth chapter of John, verses 16 through 21. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is one of the most wonderful stories in the fourth gospel, and it's all the more wonderful when we examine the meaning of the Greek to find that it really describes not some extraordinary miracle, but a simple incident in which John found, in a way he never forgot, what Jesus was like. So now let's reconstruct the story. After the feeding of the 5,000 and the subsequent attempt to make him king, Jesus slipped up into the hills alone. The day passed without Jesus' presence. It came to the time which the Jews described as the second evening, the time between the twilight and the dark. Jesus had still not arrived. Now, we must not think that the disciples were forgetful or discourteous in leaving Jesus behind. As Mark tells the story, Jesus sent them on ahead, that from uh, Mark 6, verse 45, while he persuaded the crowds to go home. Doubtless, it was his intention to walk around the head of the lake while they rode across and rejoin them in Capernaum. The disciples set sail. The wind got up as it can in the narrow landlocked lake, and the waters were whipped to foam. From John 6, 4, we know it was Passover time, and of course, that's the time of the full moon. Up on the hillside, Jesus had prayed and communed with God, and as he set out, that silver moon made the scene almost like daylight. Down on the lake below, he could see the boat and the rowers toiling at the oars, having difficulty. So he came down. Now we must remember two facts. At the north end, the lake was no more than four miles across. And John tells us that the disciples had rowed between three and four miles. That is to say, they were nearly at the end of their journey. It's natural to suppose that in the wind they hugged the shore of the lake, seeking what shelter they might find. The second fact is that they saw Jesus, as the new Revised Standard Version has it, walking on the sea. The Greek is precisely the same phrase used in John 21, verse 1, where it means, and this has never been questioned, that Jesus was walking on the seashore. And that is what the phrase means in our passage also. Jesus was walking on the seashore. The toiling disciples looked up and suddenly saw him. It was also unexpected, and they had bent so long over their oars that they were alarmed because they thought it was a spirit that they were seeing. Then across the waters came that well-loved voice. It is I. Don't be afraid. 
They wanted him to come on board, but the Greek most naturally means that their wish was not fulfilled. Why? Remember the breadth of the lake was four miles, and they had rowed about that distance. The simple reason was that before they could take Jesus on board, the boat grounded on the shingle, and they were saved. Here is just the kind of story that a fisherman like John would have loved and remembered. Every time he thought of it, he would feel that night again, the gray silver of the moonlight, the rough oar against his hand, the shriek of the wind, and the astonishing appearance of Jesus. As he remembered, John saw wonders which are still there for us. First, he saw that Jesus watches. Upon the hill, Jesus had been watching them. He had not forgotten them. He was not too busy with God to think about them. John suddenly realized that all the time they had pulled at the oars, Jesus' loving look was on them. And when we are up against it, Jesus watches. He does not make things easy for us. He lets us fight our own battles, like a parent watching a child put up an effort in some athletic contest. He is proud of us or like a parent watching a child falter in some athletic contest. He is sad along with us. Life is lived with the loving eye of Jesus upon us. Second, he saw that Jesus comes. Down from the hillside, Jesus came to enable the disciples to make that last pull to reach the shore safely. He does not watch with serene detachment when our strength is failing, he comes with strength for the last effort, which leads us to victory. Third, John saw that Jesus helps. Jesus watches, Jesus comes, and Jesus helps. It's the wonder of the Christian life that there is nothing that we are left to do alone. A teacher in a small country school once told her class this story about Jesus, and she must have told it well. Some short time afterwards, there was a blizzard of wind and snow. When school finished, the teacher had to help the children home. Sometimes she had to practically drag them through the drifts. When they were all exhausted from the struggles, she overheard a small boy exclaim, we could use that fellow Jesus with us now. The point of the lesson today is that we could all use Jesus with us now. And thanks to all the wonderful people who have chosen to follow him, we need not be without him as long as they are willing to do his work. Fourth, John saw that Jesus brings us to the haven. It seemed to John, as he remembered it, that as soon as Jesus arrived, the keel of the boat grated on the shingle, and they were there. As the psalmist said, then they were glad because they had quiet, and he brought them to their desired haven. That from Psalm 107, verse 30. Somehow in the presence of Jesus, the longest journey is shorter and the hardest battle easier. One of the loveliest things in the fourth gospel is that John, the old fisherman turned evangelist, found all the wealth of Christ in the memory of this fisherman's story. Thank you for joining me this week. God bless you all.